Okay, welcome to another weekly GMBN Tech show. Of course, I'm here at Eurobike. It's the world's biggest cycle trade show. We're we'll checking out all the new kit for 2019. So some very special stuff coming up in news. Stay tuned. So, 11 speed, then 12 speed, and now we've got 13 speed, in case that wasn't enough for you. 11.52 on this. And not only is it the world's first 13 speed transmission, it's a completely bespoke transmission from Rota. It's hydraulically operated, and you can fit that cassette on an open source, regular spline rear hub. And it's compatible with all existing 12 speed hubs out there. It's insane. Just have a look at this thing. From the ground up, hydraulic shifting, dedicated shift lever, dedicated rear derailleur. So you're gonna get no friction whatsoever, whatever the cable routing is on your bike. You're just gonna get clean and perfect shifting every single time. And as you can see, it looks pretty rad as well. And look at that cassette. Absolute work of art. Can you believe it? 13 speed. So something I particularly like about this bike, of course, John Parker's history with Yeti and all of the retro side of mountain biking. It's made this brand new bike with modern geometry on here, quite an aggressive, kind of a hardcore hardtail, I guess. And it's got these head 45 mil wide carbon rims on here. These are the Raptors, very trick, designed for a max or a 2.6 kind of tire, like a wide trail tire, really reflective of where this bike is intended. And it's really cool to see head rims back. Let's have a little look at those rims. And here are the same head Raptor rims, the 45 mil on their own carbon hub. What I can tell you about them is they're 28 hole. They're designed for 2.6 tires max. And although I have not got an exact weight, they're well under 800 grams to the front wheel and well under 900 grams to the rear wheel. That is super light for a 45 mil, 27 and a half inch wheel. Tough as boots, built by head, bit of a classic as far as mountain biking goes, super trick. Clipless pedal users tend to fall into one of two camps. Tend to be a Crank Brothers user or a Shimano style user. Now these fun pedals use the Shimano pattern jaws on there. And like the Shimano ones, they use a sprung loaded mechanism on the interior here, which means you're absolutely gonna get clipped in perfectly every single time. I think the thing I really like about these pedals, other than the fact they look cool, they come in cool colors, is that sprung mechanism thing that works so well on traditional Shimano pedals is exactly that, for getting ease of clipping into the pedal. It's the thing that works so well on Crank Brothers pedal because the internal can rotate around, always gets you clipped in. Now on some other pedals of this style, you see a fixed clip mechanism on the interior. Now this is different because this is a single-sided pedal, so you're always gonna be able to get in. But on a regular pedal like this, it can make it harder to engage while still getting a grip on the pedal itself. When you're looking for a downhill style clippers pedal, always try and look for an inner mechanism that can rotate because it's way more natural to clip in. And that's one of the coolest ones out there. Okay, so we're here at FSA and we're just checking out a few cool things. One of them is their new drop post called the Floatron. So it comes in both 125 and 150 mil drops. It's available in two lengths, available in 421 and 446 millimeters. So it fits a wide variety of frames, including some of the smaller frames that have curved seat tubes. A little bit of a problem with that sort of design. It's a very low friction design. It's got a one piece stanchion and a clamp unit on the top there. It's got a three key system on the inside to stop any movement and it's got a really really nice lever it's a low friction design lever with a really nicely sized paddle on there and it's got quite like a high friction design so really good in wet and demanding conditions where your glove or your thumb might be sliding around on there really nice bit of kit there and it's got very low friction movement to it as well so nice and easy on the hand and you barely have to put any weight on it just to drop it down nice bit of kit and these are the brand new fsa K-Force wider and a 30 mil rims, a 30 mil deep and 30 mil wide. Carbon, of course, super light, super stiff, loads of tire support on there. And they're laced up with a two cross design with aero spokes. And something that's particularly cool about these, this is an asymmetric rim. So therefore you get a better bracing angle on the spokes there. Really cool bit of design there. Now the hubs themselves have got cartridge bearings in there. They're very competitively weighted as well. So weighting in 29 inch wheels are 1566 grams and in 27 and a half they're 1488. Up front you've got two sets of cartridge bearings, you've got boosts and all the usual configurations available. Out rear they've got four to really support the load 
that's really being put through wheels like this. Now power meter cranks are something definitely on the up with mountain bike racing, especially strangely in the enduro class, where people really want to monitor how much power they can lay down, how efficiently we're pedaling, all that sort of stuff. Now this is the FSA power box, so available in a two by, in a one by, and it does left and right crank arms, they're standard on these, so you can really monitor the power input through both of your legs and train accordingly to make yourself a better rider, essentially. Now, all the usual stuff applies with them. They've got the carbon cranks on there, they've got the inserts, they've got replaceable spider systems on there, so depending on what configuration you want to run, whether you want to run a one by with narrow eyes or if you want to run a two by system, there is an option there to suit everyone. Of course, they're compatible with both Shimano and SRAM. Another great power aid for all you budding racers out there. And yet another cool thing here is from the FSA is their hollow carbon cranks. So this is the K-Force Modular 1 by crank and this is a BB392 Evo system on here. So there's a whole number of things you can do with this. 170, 175 millimeter accepts a direct chainring on there. Of course, the chainring detailing is really nice. This is a 32, a narrow wide design, CNC machined, very trick piece of kit nice alloy inserts on the inside there to keep the weight down and make sure that they continue working really well. So there's two different spindle designs, there's the forged one and there's the 30 mil spindle. Can't actually see the spindle on this particular one here that's on display. And the, the weight, due to the fact that they're hollow cranks, are super light, they're 535 grams. Really competitive crank, very stiff, very light, very trick. And as you can see, I'm just stepped outside the halls here at Eurobike just to uh, get all the good stuff from you guys. So first up is Bike Cave, which of course, as we all know, is where you guys keep your bikes, you maintain your bikes, you hang out and play with your bikes, all that sort of cool stuff, really. So first up this week, we've got Chef Jeff. Interesting name. I wonder if you are actually a chef. Um, Love in tech show inspired me to get my own bike cave. Let me know what you think. Cheers, Jeffrey. Well, I certainly like the amount of bikes you've got on there. So you've got a Jamis full sus hung up there. You've got a road bike, load of jerseys, GMBN jerseys, good taste down the back there. Massive TV in there. Is that for when you're just watching GMBN tech videos or is that for when you're training using Zwift or something like that, perhaps? Cool setup either way. Yeah, Husky setup down the back there. I can see a park, bottom bracket, spanner amongst others. Nice setup. I definitely approve, and there's enough stuff going on on the walls. It looks lived in. It looks like my kind of bike cave. Definitely. Some mountain bike action artwork there. Oh, that is your Jamis bike on the cover there. I just got the reference. Very nice. Oh, and a cheeky bottle of martini down the back there. Very nice. Well into that. Next one entry this week is from Sebastian Caldryish. Uh, hi, Doddy. I'm 15. This is my bike cave. It's built with a concrete floor and has a normal door plus a roll-up garage door for easy in and out access for my bikes and it's fully insulated. Also, I'm currently digging a trench to run electrical to it as we've got a 200 meter extension cord that runs to my house at the moment. Yeah, you definitely want to make that a bit more permanent. Make sure you put that inside some sort of trunking to make sure it stays safe in case you dig a hole in the garden in the future there. Uh, inside I have a full tool wall, air compressor, welder, a workbench with a vice, shelving for my motocross helmets, etc. for downhill all the clothes I've got to hang my bikes. In there, I've got a Giant Fathom, a Fuel EX 27.5 plus, a road bike, which is a Trek Monda, and then the rest of the bikes belong to my siblings. Hope you enjoy it. Well, let's check it out, Sebastian. All right, Sebastian. Yeah, like in this, decent wooden bench there, pegboard on the back there for all your tools and supplies. Definitely got the 90 degree thing going on. Martin would definitely approve of that. And your helmet's on there too. That's actually a really good use of the space there. I reckon you could probably fit up your camel backs and all that stuff up on the back there. Yeah, obviously you've got your big roll door there. You've got, uh, that's where your extension cable is. It's going out there. Compressors there, Mastercraft kit. It's good kit, that. Plenty of bikes down there. Little giant kids' bikes, awesome. All right, so next one is from Spencer Shea. Now this one's really cool. So Spencer's in the military and this is in his barracks room. So on display here, he's got his 2016 Commercial Meta Hartel and a Santa Cruz 5010 that he's building up to replace it. He's got a Scorpion bike stand, which is one of those really cool ones that clicks into the axle of the bike, so great for space saving. And of course, like being in military places, obviously spick and span in there. You obviously pay a lot of attention to make sure it's a clean working place. See, there's a nice tan wall, swirl bay tires in the background there. You've got the matting down on the floor, cabalt, tool chest at the back. 
small space but like really well equipped. 5010 does it really cool on that Scorpion bike stand. Definitely liking those. They're quite cool things to stick in the back of the car as well actually for just tweaking your bike when you get to the location that you go riding at. Nice, and you've got colour coordinated Allen keys down the back there. Oh, nice work. Wicked, thank you guys. That is all for this week. All right, guys, you guessed it, it's time for Rewind, which is our retro section of this show. Hopefully, you've all been sending loads of entries. I've got some amazing ones right here. We're just going to take a look at. Make sure you send them in. Use that hashtag Rewind, or if you really have to, use Retro, because I'll look for that as well in the subject heading there. Send them into the email address on the screen right now. That's hellotech at gmbn.com. First up this week is from Arian Waldich. This is my hookah booger eagle from around 1992 to 1995. My uncle bought it but never properly rode it, so it's been locked up for 25 years. It's equipped with a RockShox Judy XC, 100 millimeters. Do you know what? I think it's got less than that. I think the Judy XC only had like 80 mil or so. Um, I might be wrong, but it's a pretty old fork. So Magura Raceline brakes, absolute classic, hydraulically operated rim brakes on there. So powerful, in fact, that a lot of frames used to have to use brake boosters with them or Magura's independent brake booster because it, they would put so much pressure on they'd actually squeeze the seat stays of the bike apart. I modified the DRXT drivetrain and also the Cranks RXT uh, from a 3x8 to 3x9 and it's got triggers instead of the old grip shifters. It's also got a new stem and bar, it's very light. I ride it to our local trails every two days and everyone looks at it and thinks I'm crazy for shredding down the trails on this baby. But I take care of it and it's a lot of fun and it will be for a long time. Greetings from Germany. Hey, we're in your home, home country right now. We're in Friedrichshafen at the moment, but let's check out your bike, Arian. Oh, loving that first picture of all the graffiti as well. So stylish. Love it. So oh, you've got reverse components handlebars. That's a modern handlebar, you cheeky so-and-so. I can spot that a mile off, but it does look period on there, I have to say. It looks a little wide, but it looks right. And they, they look like Richie Megabyte tyres. Is that right? Flipping heck, I've not seen a set of those since about 1992. That is proper old school. They were before the Z-Max. Judy XC looks great. Lovely photos, by the way, in that light. Super nice. Okay, next up is from Chris Hilling. Dolly attached is an old picture my dad found of me and my old B17 with retro mods as well. Check that Tioga saddle out. I think I was 14 at the time. I had to wash the cars for years to pay for that bike. I'm now 31, recently got back into riding, so I've attached a picture of my new bike too. All right, Chris, let's see what you got. Oh, dude, that's an awesome picture. An old Fox Racing top there, look like a pair of Airwalk ones you're wearing as well. RST Mozo Pros, like the, oh, the Mar I lied. RST High Fives was a twin crown one. Five inch travel, maybe six inch travel, twin crown, elastoma sprung. And check that Tioga saddle out. That's like a flipping sofa. There was a bit of a phase back then. Tioga did it and SDG had a saddle called the Big Boy. I had one on one of my bikes. I'll show you that in next week's show. That's got a pretty painful reminder of uh, how I got into this career, actually. Um, we'll get into that in another show. But yeah, wicked to see that. Cool retro picture, that. Definitely good for a throwback Thursday. Keep that one in mind. Uh, of course, yep, yeah, you've got the spanking. Santa Cruz there, Fox Forks, Max's tires, Troy Lee gloves to match, the kind bag as well. Very nice. Good work, good to see you're back in the biking as well. It never goes away, I think. It's always kind of there if you've been into it at some point. Nice work. All right, and the last one this week is one I'm actually super excited about because I accidentally glimpsed a picture of this already. So this is from Daniel Gustafsson. I'm a guy from Sweden and my name is Daniel. I've been a huge fan of retro bikes since my first job in 1998. I worked in a bike shop selling Cannondale's, Kona, Orange, etc. In Sweden, we didn't have such a big market amount of bikes, so for me, it's like a new world. The project I sent in, I started last year with a frame I bought. I was looking for a titanium frame, but found out that most of them were too expensive for me, and this time, I found exactly what I wanted. It's a Park Pre Pro Elite from that era, made by Lightspeed titanium frames. The goal I have is to fit some new parts in harmony with the frame. It took me seven months to complete the bike to the condition as in the pictures. Everything's restored and overhauled with new parts, the chain, fork internals, cassette, etc. Complete list of the parts is all genuine. I'd be really glad if you post it in your program, Rewind. Dude, 
Daniel, I couldn't be happier to post this. Look how badass this is. Oh, look at all the kit you got on there. Spinnergy wheels and there's a carbon bladed wheels with alloy rims. I see you've got some Conti Raceport tires, not quite period, but I guess it is kind of hard to find those original things from back in the day. However, Manitou Mac 5 fork on there. That's very cool. Anodized headset, nice stem and seat post combination. XCR cranks, everything on there, the flight tie saddle. Oh man, loving all the different angles of the photos. Well, check the wheels out though. It's gnarly. Can you imagine falling off, get your arm stuck in there? I think what would happen? Are they XTR V brakes or are they XTs? I can't quite see from the angle. Lizard skins, fork stanchion protectors. Oh, you've got those Shimano flappy paddle shifter things. I know that they're retro and I know that they're period, but man, those things were awful. You'd accidentally change gear when going over rough terrain because you change gear like you do on the road bikes on their shifters, like brakes, and then change gear. Oh, makes me shudder, but love the bike. Rare to see a park free, I've got to say. I've not even seen many of those myself. Really, really nice example. Nice work, Daniel. Thanks for sending that in. If you guys want to get your bikes featured in the rewind section so you know where to send them. All right, now it is top mods. This is where you guys do little modifications to your bike or maybe massive modifications. Whatever you've done to make your bike better for you, let us know about it. Take some pictures, tell us what you've done, send it into the show, use your address, use the hashtag top mods. Now the first one's a particularly cool one. This is from Greg Shapaniak. So Greg's a bit of a regular on the show. He's actually had several bikes featured here and I bumped into Greg at the Malvern Hills Classic recently and had a bit of a chat to him. So this is really cool to see. So. Hi Dolly, firstly it was great to meet you at the Malvern's Classic on Saturday. Hope you got to see everything you wanted. Did you see the retro show and shine on Sunday? It was amazing. I didn't see it on the Sunday, but I did see virtually every single retro bike there and took shots of all of them. Uh, I'm sure you've seen some of them on the show. There's going to be more popping up on the GMBN Tech Instagram and of course on my one here and there. Um, I know you spotted my custom steer of top cap, so I thought I'd send it in for top mods. Why not? Here we go, on the screen right there. So there's Greg's custom top cap there, and that's from Caps. So that's a website where you can upload your own artwork to it, as far as I know, and they will print it out and anodize it and stuff. You can have your own custom top cap. Very cool, and also cool to have your own name on the bike. Uh, the other thing I like is, you said it was your first race. So thanks again for taking the time to stop and chat. By the way, I came 41st out of 58 in the 30 to 39 age group, my first ever race, the Fun Giro. I had a blast. Dude, that's the way, keep on it. Racing should be fun. Of course, if you're really competitive, it's got to be fun and hard as well, but don't let the fun aspect sort of go. It has to be fun. So congratulations, good work for getting your first race done. Hopefully it's given you a taster to do some more. Good luck and stay in touch, Greg. Nice work. Next up is from Sean Toms. Hi Doddy and GMBN Tech. I recently, I really enjoy the uh, weekly show and I thought I'd send you some of my own top mods. I bought a 2017 Scott Genius 740 Almost immediately found a stock knobby neck, it's too thin and plasticky, so I upgraded to uh, Max's DHF and Aggressor tyre, so uh, Mini and DHF on the front and Aggressor out back, assuming like 2.3, something like that. Uh, also got a shorter 35mm stem. A few weeks later I snapped a brake lever, so I've got some new ones. I've got some flash orange grips and some fake carbon spacers. After that I split the rear rim at the weld and it was replaced under warranty. I split the second rim and I decided it was time for an upgrade. So I've got some Mavic D-Max wheels. Also found some DC Swisses. Oh man, what haven't you done to your bike? You basically changed everything. Came stock with a two x 10 drivetrain. Now you've got race face narrow wide, 10 speed cassette out back. Also got the goat link to go on there as well, but found it didn't work. So I settled for a longer B-tension screw. Hey, that's a great tip. Um, obviously the B-tension is what adjusts the, the radiator in relation to the cassette itself. So a longer B-tension screw can get around that by extending the limit of it. Yeah, that's quite cool. Uh, finally, I've got some new disc rotors, a side mount bottle cage and some Nuke-proof Neutron pedals. Hey, good work, dude. Like, there's a lot of shots of this. Loving the, the grips on there. Very nice. That's, I think that's like a map of Whistler or something in those lines. Um, turbine dropper post lever. Nice and clean. Really nice. All colour coordinated, obviously. Looking good. Yeah, it looks like that mech working just fine with the goat link there. Hey, the whole bike looks really clean, doesn't it? Nice work, Sean. Thanks for sending that one in. And the final one this week is from Reef Thomas. Loving the show. Thought I'd share my version of Trigger's Broom. Um, 
I bought a Cube Hardtail in 2014 to commute to it, and then I discovered Bike Park Wales. I've slowly upgraded parts to make, make it more suitable and aggressive. All the usual things, gradually over a few years, big flat pedals, burly tyres, stronger wheels, iron hope hubs, shorter stem, wide bars, dropper post, one bite oval kit, basically everything. You've changed the whole lot, haven't you? I get that. Um, as you can see, the only original things left were the forks, fr cranks, frame and, and seat. Um, my quite extreme top mod is that now I've swapped out the fork and frame. So it's basically a completely different bike. It's not really a mod, is it? You've basically bought a bike and I bought another one. But hey, that's a really cool way you've done it. And I really like the way it looks as well. So starting out, we've got your first bike there, the Cube. Perfectly good bike. Nice hardtail there. Perhaps a little bit short if you want to be riding stuff at Bike Park Wales at the time. But it looks great. And then look at this with a pipe dream frame in there. Look how long that bad boy is. Really tight back end, so I bet that thing manuals like a champ. And then nice and long out front, slack. The Fox factory color forks there on the front. Ergon grips, man, you got it absolutely dialed in. Love it, mate. Absolutely love it. Hopefully I'll be riding a bike park well soon. So if you see us, come and say hi. Maybe we'll get a couple of laps in. Thanks for sending your bike in, Reese. Good work. Love what you've done. There we go, guys. I'm going back into the hall now to see what other weird, wild, wacky, cool, amazing, and brand new tech we can find you from Eurobike 2018. Okay, so we're here at NS Bikes, checking out some of their rad looking bikes. In particular, what I really like is the color coordination that you see on a lot of their bikes. They look very much like a Finnish bike that you would try, like tune yourself, changing the chain, put some color coordinated grips on. It's a lot of attention to detail. But this is what I want to talk to you about. This is the brand new Define. It's a carbon fiber, 29 inch wheel enduro bike. It comes in two sizes, a medium and a large, and in 130 and 150 mil travel. It's the same frame, but it's got basically a different block at the bottom there. If you look on the 150, it's got a shorter one and a longer stroke shock. So you can basically run them like, like you want, really. Now, something that's particularly interesting is the adjustable reach on the front of the frame here. We've seen this previously on the Kona bikes. And now we're starting to see this on a lot of other bikes, which I really like for one. Now, something that's also really interesting is the fact that only making a medium and a large. In a large, with the offset set in a longer position, it's got 500 millimeters reach. So that's actually up there with most XL bikes. So a really good range of size in there. Tried and tested four bar system. Very active, active under pedaling, active under braking. And it's got one more cool thing up its sleeve. And it's kind of, I don't know what you call it, it's kind of internal but external cable routing on the bottom of the down tube there. It's all housed on the underside there, so for ease of access, but it keeps the frame looking really nice. This is a pre-production one, so you actually find that some of these bits stick out that you won't be seeing on production. And on the production one, it's got a rubber bumper that comes up to about halfway up the down tube as well. So it's going to be slightly different, slightly more revised, but it looks pretty trick. Now, something else I really like about NS Bikes is they make their own componentry. Now, that's not an uncommon thing. A lot of brands do choose to do that. Mondre can have an in-house brand called On-Off, and they make their own components. The thing I like about it, the NS stuff is how nicely finished and color-coordinated it is. Look at the finish on this stem, the way it's sort of chamfered around the sides. That's like an aftermarket, high-end stem, but it comes as standard on the bike. Really desirable kit. Oh, and one last thing that I kind of like that you guys might not like. Look on the hubs here. They've got these rubber bands fitted around the hubs, which actually clean the hubs as you ride. It's an old roadie trick. You used to see that with shoelaces back in the day. A little bit cleaner. Of course, if you don't like it, you can just cut them off. No problem. Obviously, I'm no stranger to a bit of retro kit. Check out this old Scott Racing. So obviously, it's their anniversary this year, so they're celebrating where they've been, where they've come from, and where they're going. Now this is made from Tange Prestige tubing. It was a super high-end steel tubing back in the day for off-road use only. Check that graphic on there, just underneath the height right. The first dropper post, technically on paper that was. San Marco saddle on there. Out back you've got, you've got Wilbur rims, front and rear, and you've got the famous Farmer John's tires on the back. So that's a Tioga tire named after John Tomac, who was a farmer and probably still is a farmer. In the series of those tyres, there's Farmer John, Farmer John's nephew, and Farmer John's cousin. It's another one of those random tyres. Up front, you've got an IRC tyre. Doesn't quite match up. You've got XT transmission on there with a short cage rear derailleur. Cantilever brakes. Really nice. Thumb shifters on there too. Foam grips, bar ends. It's got a whole works on the bike. Real nice to see. And can you believe this one? So this is a Scott Racing DHR from way back in the day. 
carbon fiber frame. Look at that CG one, it's like a time trial bike. It's insane. And then on the inside here, you've got a shock. The valve is poking out through the top tube there, so you can adjust the suspension on there. It looks, in fact, like the, this bolt on here has actually been catching on the frame under compression. A high single pivot on that one. XCR derailleur, Mavic rims on there, SUP ceramics. The SUP rim, of course, was one of the first rims that they pinned them, they welded them, and then they machined them down so they were perfectly straight and perfectly smooth. Richie Z Max tyres, front and rear. Scott's own fork on the front. We've seen better days, but pretty flipping cool to see this one as well. Yeah. Just notice as well, it's got a Scott Matthauser brake pads. First thin magnesium holders there with a the soft compound pads tucked in there. That's pretty cool to see. And another classic here, it's one of the old endorphins. Single piece like monocoque carbon fibre construction this. Now I'm pretty sure this is the one that Nick Craig raced at the Malvern Hills Classic in the Legends class recently. If not, then he's got one with exactly the same spec as this and it's super cool to see. Elevated chain stand there so you can get rid of the chain stuck issues the bikes used to have. Makes things nice and light, a little bit of flex out back, super short chain stay on there. Wild looking, you know Scott have done some pretty crazy bikes over the years. The bikes now are definitely looking more refined than this but this is amazing to see so there we go there's another gmbn tech show in the bag from here at eurobike hopefully you enjoyed all the content and we've got more content every single day this week so make sure you tune into the channel for a couple more great videos click down here for money saving hacks and tips part two and if you want to see all the kit that neil took on his longest solstice ride click down there as always click on the round globe to subscribe to GMBN Tech and if you don't already do it, share it around to all your friends and if you like all the new tech for 2019 give us a thumbs up.